said surprising, shocking to people. They thought it was out of touch that he didn't address the main concerns that the protesters wanted him to address. The main concern of the protesters is for Mr. President to bring back subsidy because they felt there is hunger, there is hunger in the country. So as a subsidy has not been, so maybe has not been helpful. We knew subsidy is essential and very necessary because by subsidizing a lot of things, you see an ordinary man can get. But look at it today. Petroleum is sold as high as 1,000 naira today. So there is inflation in food prices. There is inflation in... What do you mean 1,000 naira? Which... There are places like at Black Market, you see 1,000 naira. The only place you see them selling fuel is the NPC and government uh, control price filling stations. Oh. Is okay. that the president of the problem of the Mr. President? The marketers are to be blamed as well. All right, Dr. Kobo, I mean, you know, there are several dynamics to this. Yes, the protests rang out. Then the president addressed the country. And then more reaction concerning, wait a minute, this is not all we're talking about here. Would you rather speak or not? But if it's this way, they thought, big question marks. What do you think of all of this? Well, I want to, first of all, thank my colleague here. He's actually doing the job for me. I would have loved to listen <laughs> to him. First of all, uh, Sheikh Hussani at the presidential villa told President Tinubu, you are the father of protest. If going by his submission that there has never been any peaceful protest, protest. He is actually saying that President Tinubu has never been any peaceful man by his own submission, not mine. Although I respectfully disagree with him because I know that they unleash the greatest protests against this country. And in all conscience, I would not say that they were extremely violent. When they protested against Gulag Jonathan because of a 20 naira increase in fuel, today they say purportedly that they have removed fuel subsidy that landed the price of oil from 195 naira to, according to him again, 1,000 naira. In black markets? No, even in real market. In Lagos, 1,200 naira. And the funny thing is that it's not even available. People have to spend hours in the filling station to pay 900 naira, and it's not even available. What a government. Now, the people are protesting for hunger and hardship, for deprivation, for degradation. And the president was compelled to speak. I wish they did not compel him. Because if I were a media aide, I would have preferred there was no speech at all. Because a bad speech is worse than no speech at all. What was wrong with that speech for you? First and foremost, it was contradictory. It was inflammatory. It was annoying. It was disheartening. I'll give you an example. Paragraph two of that speech. He was recognizing that it is the children that are desiring for a better nation that are protesting. In paragraph 5, he's already saying that it is by some politicians that have clear political agenda. What a contradiction. In paragraph 6, the president said, in his own words, for people who want to take undue advantage of this situation to threaten a section of the country, be warned, the law will catch up with you. There is no place for ethnic bigotry in, in Nigeria we seek to build. This same president is harboring as a media aide, a man who after 2023 said Igbos are aliens in Yoruba land. He said Igbos should never interfere with the police of Lagos State. That 2023 should be the last time that the Igbos should interfere in the police of Lagos State. And in 2027, it should not repeat itself again. It was on his Twitter space, and I'm talking about Bayon Onuga. If the president is sincere in what he said in paragraph 6 of his speech, the first thing he would have done is to sack Bayon Onuga. And you know, in addition to the speech being empty and very annoying, it was even leaked before the day. And people were making caricature of the president when he was talking. They were reading with him and even reading ahead of his own speech. And he has such level of incompetence in the media aid and he did not take them out. And give another example. For now, we have 48 ministers going to 49. These children, what are they asking for? They are simply saying, sir, this first subsidy removal, this depreciation of Naira, this electricity tariff, they are unsustainable, and I agree with them. Mm. So is it to say that the fact that he even spoke and decided to at least try and address the concerns of Nigerians counts for nothing because you think that the speech is not good enough? No. It is because, I'm sorry to say this, because I don't have a better way to express it. I don't even know whether he understands or he understood what he said. Because he said, this is the broadcast by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces mm. on nationwide protest. And what is it about the nationwide protest that he addressed? 
was telling us he gave 570 billion naira to governors. And the first time he started dishing out these billions to governors was when they had cases in Tribula. And you knew what happened to those okay. billions. Uh, but, but, but Dr. Kuso, uh, I mean, I'm sure that is not the first time you'll be hearing reactions to the president's speech. So within the party, is it that they're all on the same page saying, look, uh, irrespective of what people think, the party still thinks, or you, for instance, now, since you're here with us, that the speech for you is still good enough? To me, the speech is good enough. Because if you look at the majority of those agitating for end bad governors are youths. So you have to address them to tell them his plans for them and what he has done to them so far. Majority of the youths used in this process are uninformed youths. Why do I say they are uninformed? Mr. President has given enough funds to the state government, to the state governors. It is expected that the governors will also empower the local government chairman. That's why we have three types of government. The grassroots are the ones feeling the heat of this hardship, you are saying. But now, now that we have that Supreme Court decision about the local governments, they're not supposed to interfere with the local governments. So uh, that's... Has it been implemented yet? Mr. Kuso, hmm? they've given time... You've used a phrase, you used a phrase here today. Yeah. You said you that were used. What do you mean by that? They were the ones protesting. You see, under on the age youths. You, youths. Yes, used by who? But used by the people that organized the protest. This is a faceless protest leaders. We don't, we don't know who are the leaders. Did you see actual... We understand the looting, and the, we saw a lot of hoodlums and things like that happening. But did you see... Regular Nigerians protesting as well. Most of these people, you, you most see? of these people you see, they are using to are use, They are not Nigerians. Listen, you can't say most that. Most of them are not Nigerians. Listen, did you see? It's, did you see in any way from day one? Did you see actual Nigerians protesting? Most of us, they, they, they are youths, and most of them, as I said, they are not Nigerians. A loving, a good loving, a rightful Nigerian will not destroy the nation. We said, you know, that's that's the trick I keep hearing a lot of people make. You try to lump. Actual protesters with looters. That's not the case, is it? The first day you saw. Are there people who are genuine protesters and then they are looters? Can you acknowledge that at least? Initially, mm. we thought they were genuine protesters. But we knew the Atma would be the criminal element would take over. And that's what's happening. So that's Look at how they are looting. Doesn't that you can't imagine, We've seen all you of that. You can't imagine in Kano State, the NCC all built for the, for, for, for the youths to train them to have fun has been destroyed. Who, which of the good loving citizens would destroy things like that? Some of the some people who you can see someone sitting on top of a traffic light breaking it for what? Some people, people some people who criticize this train of thought that you're going with state categorically, and I want you to answer this: that the idea that hi, that a protest can be hijacked doesn't mean that people should not protest. It sounds lazy on the part of government if they keep saying because looters can come and hijack a protest, people shouldn't come out to protest. Do you think that maybe some? Evolving has to happen in the way protests are managed in Nigeria so that people can exercise their right to protest and then the looters and hoodlums will not be allowed to hijack it. Do you think this is something government can do? It's going to happen. And that's why I'm saying when they have leaders, the leaders should come up. If you, look, if you listen to Mr. President's speech, he says he's open for the, to dialogue. So we feel the best way to get this done is, is through dialogue. The leaders will have seen from Mr. President's attention to sit down and tell him, okay, this is what we want. If you want cutting governors, okay, address what, uh, bring out your agitations. Me, sit down with Mr. President and address better protest because we knew the aftermath of the protest. And that is what's happening today. Mm. Look at it yesterday. Protesters turning on holding Russian, Russian flags. What does that have to do with end bad governance protest? You said they're not Nigerians. Who are they? They are boys from the neighboring countries. They are coming in. Look at it in Nigeria. In, in Nigeria. People at the age of between 18 to 30 are the majority. You get? And we have a, a system, which I must say this clearly. Our immigration system is very poor. Our own uh, borders are very porous that anybody can come in. So the amount of people we have in the country is most of them are, are, are foreigners coming in from Niger, from Chad, just to have a livelihood. It is the duty of immigration to have the real numbers and data of those foreigners. So if you look at them, most of them are non Nigerians. I want, to, the I want you to be able to get uh, Mr. Kenneth Okonkwa to speak on this because it does seem like there's, some, there's, there's, um, there's a gap in understanding as to what has happened and what should have happened. Um, one of the things that many people com complained about with the president's speech was that he didn't talk about the cost of governance at all throughout the speech. In, 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 if, you, if you had his ear, what would you have asked him? Because that cost of governance goes to some of the short-term demands of all Nigerians. If you had his ear, what would you have told him to say about the cost of governance in that speech? If I had his ear, mm. I'll first of all tell Mr. President that he should recognize 
that the power of the people is superior to the people in power. And that he should show respect to Nigerians. I would have told him, what case do you think you will make for hunger and hardship when you have 48 ministers? Bogus. When you could have had only 37, according to the Constitution. I would tell Mr. President, why would you have to spend 21 billion naira on the house of your vice president? Mr. President, why give billions to your wife when she has even said in front of a church that we don't need it because we're already blessed with money? Mr. President, why give 6 billion naira to National Assembly to build CAPAC when you are giving loan to students? Why don't you give grants to the students? Mr. President, you have the greatest number of out-of-school children in the North. They are going to be a problem to you. I am really surprised that my colleague here is talking about the porous border for a president that has the largest bureaucracy who could not even police our border. You see, his statement is as contradictory and as confusing as the speech of the president. Because I'm sitting here trying to make out the meaning of what he's saying, and at the end of the day, I will get thoroughly confused. So the issue here is, if I'm with the president, I would say, cut down. When they removed first subsidy, the first day they did it, I came out and shouted, no, 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 no. Be very careful in coming out of this subsidy. And the reason is because it will be unsustainable. There are certain things you ought to have done before contemplating removing subsidy. How can you be talking about palliative? Let me tell you the truth. Any subsidy you remove and you talk about palliative is a very wrong decision. Because subsidy in itself is a palliative that is actually treating the condition. Palliative or sharing money is relieving the symptoms without dealing with the condition. But palliative as subsidy, as low electricity tariff, they are treating the condition. So I will tell this, Mr. President, you ought not to remove this subsidy if you intend to share money to your ministers and to everybody. Restore this subsidy so that you will make sure that supply is there. Use all this money you're borrowing. Fix the refineries. They borrowed almost $18 billion in a year. Where will that kind of a thing sustain your economy? Depreciated Naira by 100 by 300%. Let me tell you, they are saying 70,000 minimum wage. 70,000 minimum wage at the cost of 1,600 Naira is $44. 30,000 minimum wage, which he met at the price of 500 Naira to a dollar, is $60. Which one is more? So this government has depreciated the standard of living of people. And what he should do is to ensure productivity. Give incentives to productivity. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has ably stated the problem they are going through. Mm. Frequent policy flip flop, high interest rates, hyperinflation, astronomical energy costs, toxic environment to operate, multiple charges. You don't have these things and you want productivity? No, that is hypocrisy. Mr. Kuso, do you think that the cost of governance, you belong to this party, is the cost of governance astronomically high in your view? It is high. Okay. I want to say that it is high. Because as you said, the number of our ministers is something May I love to no, it's not all about price always. There are sometimes we need to face the reality. And uh, my take on this is uh, the president we know is trying his best to cut down the cost of governance. He's somebody that listens very well. And, uh, but at this point in time, he has time to think about cutting down governance mm. and he has time to think about the protest. In what, in, what Nigerian, you think, in what ways do you think he should cut down governance right now? The best way to cut down governance is, as he earlier said, cut down the numbers of ministers at this point in time. Once you cut down the number of ministers, you get to where you are going to. That is a cut, cut, a cut of governance. Mm. So also you can see, he said there shouldn't be any foreign trip for any government official for now. It's also the cutting down of cost of governance. So what I want from the people is, it's not easy to build a structure. We know removing subsidy comes with a lot of norms. In Nigeria today, we've been enjoying subsidy for a very long time. But... Before he came on board, you can see there were a lot of agitations that Mr. President, as we subsidy have to go. We've been living a fake life and we have to come back to reality. So if the government is complaining of the amount of money it's paying to few individuals at the interest of 400 and something million Nigerians, so we felt taking off subsidy is the best thing to do. But the time he cut off subsidy, he said it before campaign, that subsidy have to go. So that means Mr. President has been so realistic in his, in his, before even he imagines mm. that subsidy has been a cause and a blessing to Nigeria. So, so you do admit that there is hardship in the country? There is hardship. It's biting everywhere. Okay. So is it possible that your earlier position, where you said the protest was, supposed, was a plan to do a change of government, is it possible that you may have been a little wrong there? 
I'm not wrong. What I said is there are better ways of dialoguing than protest. Protest, when you know the beginning of a protest, you don't know the end of a protest. And I fear in, in the initial protest where I guess protest is what is happening now? Criminal elements will take advantage of this and loot. <laughs> what does government facility have to do with the hardship? You go to government facility, you vandalize it, you, you, you remove the socket, you move the roof. What does it have to do with the hardship? Mr. Konko, what do you think about the concerns that the security agencies have consistently expressed about this protest? The president said it, it's, he's prepared to protect the fundamental rights of Nigerians. And he accepted that protest is one of them. Rather than marshalling out the security forces to protect the protesters, they are sponsoring protest against protesters. What an irony. You say you don't want protest. And your own protest commenced before the protesters' own. And you don't want protest. You see, somebody that has gotten so used to protest that he's the father of protest will even protest against protesters. No, he said that he protested, but he was but, not violent. Uh, it was a peaceful protest. You can uh, so they frown at violent yes. protest and looting of private property. First of all, I want to disagree respectfully with my colleague that the people that are sponsoring this protest are more false. I know of a senior colleague, Ebun Olu Adegoro Wasan. He wrote a letter to the president, owning up to, I am the lawyer to these people, take it back movement. He's not above us, the senior advocate of Nigeria. So he's not a protester. I know of he's, the. He's a I, lawyer. I, good. He's a I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I know of one young chap, brilliant, Damilere Adenola. He's the director of mobilization of the take it back movement. He has been interviewed. As a matter of fact, when Adeboru was said, stop, he said, sorry. I don't know what he's talking about. I know a family, Aburi Shade, who said he would never be a slave in his country, protesting. I know of a Shawere who even went further to say revolution now, and he's standing by his word. I know of the children of Nigeria, whom the president has acknowledged that they are desiring a better and more progressive country. They are protesting. Protest is secured in our constitution. I know of a Wole Shoyinka that has disagreed with this government on how they tackled protesters. These protesters warned, if you kill one of our own, we are going to change it. From and bad governors to Tinubu must go. You have to be sentimentally attached to the energy exhibited by these children. You have to respect them. When I was in university, I protested from first year to this final year, and I paid the price for it. I graduated by November of 1989 rather than June. And we went for the second batch of NYSC. I recall on one occasion, we did not eat in the morning, especially when I entered the university first, following them. They didn't know the strategy. And nearly died, you know, on the road. During June 12, a lot of people didn't know that. I was on the Pemu Bridge. Did you vandalize any property? No, I did not. Because I had enough. Vandalism is a criminal offense. Once you get to that level, you've crossed the mark. And the full rot of law should be dealt with you. Because you are a thief, you are not a protester. Protest, like I always say, is the antithesis to the thesis that brings synthesis. Protest is necessary in a democracy to ensure that the leaders are put on their toes. Mm. And you must make sure that you are seeking for a change that is definable. He suggests that we should, there should be questions for governors as well. You subscribe to that? When a man who is a president knows that there are questions about governor, why give them the money? The law requires they do that. No, the law, the law is talking about allocation. Mm. It is the duty of the House of Assembly. But all those subsidies that is given to the governors, why? What could have been done with it? When you give governors, they are partisan. You don't expect a governor of PDP to remember LP, where I belong, as a member. No, no, but, when they are sharing it. But once you're you in don't that, expect the APC. Once you're in that office, yes. as a governor, yes. your party seizes. I agree with you. You're talking about what it ought to be, not what it is. And that is why oh. a leader should factor in what it is, not what it ought to be. So, if we were in that paradise, we would be talking about rigging election. If we were in that paradise, we would be where we are today, that a nation that is producing oil... The sixth largest producer of oil is refining 100% of its oil outside Nigeria. Oh, well, we've got, we've got past that. Now, we are now where the question is, where is the money? No, the money has been blown, has been stolen. <laughs> it is not me. It is Senator Dume that said this government is government of kakistocrats and kleptocrats, meaning government by the worst set of us and compulsive thieves. So these thieves have stolen the money. In, Dr. Kusso, in places like... They should be jailed. In places like Kaduna, Kano, Bauchi. You're from the north. I'm from the north, yeah. We know this dynamic. When you saw those hoodlums and looters, what came to your mind as someone who is from the north, who's a member of this ruling party? When well, you're looking at that number of young men, we call them looters and, and hoodlums, but they're Nigerians. That's Many right. of them are. Majority of them are not. Many of them are. The majority of them are not. But, but they are in this country. Yeah. 
they are they have a governor in the states where they reside what came to your mind about what these governors have done to their states you see we have three types of government federal state and local mr president constitutionally as part of what was saved from subsidy gave it to the governors go and talk to your people go and develop your state most of this money that we are giving to them, if not when Minister of Finance said it, nobody knew such amount of money went to them. They thought they never expect a protest, they will be hit with this kind of protest. Some of them were actually published. The so, amount of money the governors were given. But nobody knew until most people don't know. That's why I say most of people are uninformed. Most people don't look at newspapers, okay, what is happening today? But the moment this process this process was on and the Minister of Information went to break it and said five hundred and seventy billion was given to the governor bomb, everybody said, okay. Where is the money? What have they done with it? Mr. President have done his own. And as my colleague said here is, it is, as you said, it is a constitutional right that he must give them that money. What did they do with the money? So if the question is, what have they done with the money? Now, the president, they're the ruling party. Yeah. You have a lot of members of the APC as governors. Mm -hmm. they don't have you, you don't have meetings among yourselves saying, listen, we're giving you this money. So go and tell the people what you've done with it. Can that happen? If you look at yesterday, when they show how much the quota came off, the governor of Zafara made a press conference that he collected 49 billion naira. Mm -hmm. He told his people, and if you go to Zafara, you see where he's spending the money. Has any APC governor said anything? He, he's in PDP. Yeah. So what, what's, what's going on with the party of APC? So, wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that it is the APC governors who are frustrating this plan for the president? How many governors have come to speak? It's not about APC or PDP. No. It's all about the governors. Look at Zulu. Anything that comes Zulu will say, okay, we're giving 20 trucks of rice to share. And I've shared, they would have seen it. So it's not about PDP or APC. No, but it's the, all about the no, mindset. If you're, it's all about the, the government person. If the question is coming from you. Yeah.